Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here, and this is the Hearthstone Mercenaries New Player Guide. In this guide I'm going to go through everything you need to know to get a good start in Hearthstone Mercenaries. I'm not going to talk about like how do you press buttons in this game, there's a tutorial for that, but everything that tutorial doesn't tell you and you would kind of need to know in order to have a smooth and good experience in this game, you're going to find this in this guide. Gameplay-wise, there is one important thing that the tutorial fails to mention, because all of your abilities have speed, so I have a 4-speed ability here, 6-speed, 9-speed, then what happens when there are abilities of the same speed? When there are abilities of the same speed on your own team, they are actually going to be queued in the order that you select them. So if you have multiple characters that have a 4-speed ability, the one that you select first is going to go first. So there's no randomness in that, you're always guaranteed the same result. Also, in PvE, there is no randomness. If there's a speed between you and your opponent, you're always going to win that. You're always going first if your opponent has a 4-speed ability and you have 4-speed ability in PvE. Then, in the PvP, it's random. You have a 4-speed ability, they have a 4-speed ability. It's a coin flip. Either one wins and goes first. While the tutorial instructs you on the gameplay basics, that is one important aspect that is missing and it's really good to know. Your first steps in Hearthstone Mercers are just playing the game, going to bounties and completing those. And through the first few missions, you're going to get 8 mercenaries for free. And I would recommend that you build a team of 6 mercenaries, that is this team, out of those and use that for your first bounties. Actually, all of the 8 mercenaries that you're going to get for free are useful, so you should work on them all eventually. But this 6 piece gives you the best chance to succeed. Your mercenaries gain power as you play with them, they gain levels, and you can upgrade their abilities and equipment. We'll talk about more of that in more detail later. But I will go through what the idea of this team is so that you have basic understanding of what's going on here, even though you don't have access to any equipment yet. So the basic trio that you're going to be playing with a lot in this game is Cariel, Samuro, and Cyrella. Cariel is the tank of the team, Cariel is mostly going to use her taunt ability. And once you have a equipment on Cariel, you want to have Dome of Light. Well, Cariel has taunt, he has even more attack. So when enemies attack into Cariel, they take even more damage. Samuro is your main damage dealer in this team, and the main ability that you're going to be using with Samuro is Double Strike. Attack an enemy, if it was damaged this turn, gain more attack and attack it again. As you're upgrading your Samuro, you want to prioritize Double Strike and also get some ability improvements into Mirror Image because those ability improvements are going to make Mirror Image faster. As for equipment, I prefer the Burning Blade, but some people also use Sash of Illusion. Both pieces are fine for Samuro. And then you have Cyrella who has excellent synergy with Samuro. Because Cyrella has Blinding Luminance, deal damage to an enemy and give it minus attack. And it's really fast, 3 speed. Samuro's attack, 4 speed. So you can get Cyrella to shoot at the enemy first and then Samuro goes in and deals a lot of damage. For Cyrella, your priority is to upgrade Blinding Luminance and to upgrade Radiant Wand. In the early stages of the game you are going to be playing with these three mercenaries a lot. The other mercenaries that are available to free are not part of your main comps usually, but they are still useful. In particular in this comp, the role of Gromash is to use Staggering Slam and Equipment Halting Sash. So Staggering Slam deals damage to an enemy, slows it down and Staggering Slam is really fast. So sometimes if you like lose Cyrella, then Gromash can be used to activate Samuro. Millhouse Manastorm is your early AoE damage dealer. Arcane Explosion, Arcane Powder, most important ability and equipment for Millhouse, secondary is Arcane Bolt. But Arcane Explosion with Arcane Powder dealing white damage is the main thing that Millhouse is doing. And finally in this team you have Tyrande, and Tyrande's main ability is Arcane Salvo, deals 16 damage to random enemies if any die repeat this, so this can do real big damage if you can set some enemies to low health. And Verdant Recurve is the best equipment because that really helps the Arcane Salvo. So that's the team that you really start the game with, and your early gameplay looks much like this. Cariel, Samuro, Cyrilla. Taunt up here, we can kill, for example, that one first. Use Blinding Luminance on that, so Blinding Luminance goes in first, and then Samuro can deal more damage, because Samuro gets the double attack whenever opponent has already been damaged earlier. Pow pow pow. They heal a little bit back in return. But that's totally fine, because we're just going to keep going at this, and a pow. That one went down, that one goes down. Typical Cariel Samoro Cyrella gameplay. 
The other two mercenaries that you get for free at the start are less useful, but they have their uses too. You get Cornelius, and Cornelius is used in a couple of different ways. It's used as defender in holy comps, and it also has this one hilarious combo comp that I'm going to showcase you here. And Cornelius, Shield of Dawn is the best equipment. You will need Blessing of Sacrifice for the combo, and then Hold the Front is the other useful ability. And the final free mercenary that you get is Rokara, and Rokara mainly sees play in this combo comp, in which Rokara needs Helm of Inspiration and Offensive Rally. The final piece of the combo is Mr. Smite, whose equipment in this one doesn't matter, and the ability that you need is Overboard. Once almost fully upgraded, this combo comp can actually take down a lot of bosses in the earlier stages of the game, and even a boss here and there in the later bounties. Because of cooldowns, the combo is only available on turn 2, so you're really trying to figure out how to survive turn 1 so that you can pull off the combo. In this case, I suppose Smite is going to be taunting and the others are just going to be chilling here. And on the second turn I can pull off my combo. I use Overboard on Smite. Cornelius will use Blessing of Protection on Smite, and Rokara will use Offensive Rally. And then, as soon as the opponents will deal some damage, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Hey, that's my friend right there. <laughs> this is pretty hilarious. And it can take down some of the bosses too. But in some of the climbs you may end up losing some of your mercenaries during the climb, so it's not always perfect for all the climbs. So those are your starting 8 mercenaries. The combo is not relevant really early, you don't even have Mr. Smite, but I just want to showcase the use of those mercenaries. The 6 piece that you start the game with really can get you through all of the normal barons, it can get you through all of the normal fellwood, and it can get you started in normal winter spring as well. Although once you hit winter spring, that is the time when you actually will need to do some upgrading on your mercenaries in order to progress further. So, as you're starting to progress through the game, it's time to start talking about your mercenaries village. There are multiple buildings in your mercenaries village that can be upgraded, and the upgrades happen through Hearthstone Gold. Hearthstone Gold is earned through the rewards track, and you will get some experience for the rewards track simply by playing mercenaries, but that experience is pretty low. The main source of experience are daily and weekly quests, but daily and weekly quests are shared between all formats, and only some of them can be completed playing Hearthstone Mercenaries. If you don't play other formats than Hearthstone Mercenaries, try to reroll your daily quests until you get some that are completable playing Mercenaries, so that will give you more XP and therefore more gold. There is one mandatory upgrade without which you cannot progress in the game, and that is upgrading your travel point. You will need to upgrade your travel point to get access to heroic bounties, and many tasks require you to be able to access heroic bounties, so if you don't do that upgrade, you simply cannot progress in the game. Everything else is optional, but useful. There's the fighting pit, which unlocks access to PvP. Well, if you want to play PvP, you will have to upgrade your fighting pit. If you don't play PvP, you can do fine without that. Then there's the campfire, and upgrading your campfire gives you access to more daily tasks. And that is very useful in order to progress faster in the game, but it's not exactly mandatory. The same applies to training grounds. You can put mercenaries in training grounds in order to get them experience and levels. You can level all your mercenaries to level 30 through training grounds, but you will still need to work on their coins to get their ability upgrades done. As your mercenaries gain the same amount of experience from fights, whether they are on the bench or whether they are actually on the board, you can just carry some weaker mercenaries with your group and then they will level up while you're doing that. But training grounds is still a nice convenience. When you use training grounds, the mercenary can gain experience for up to 25 hours. And it takes 3 days for a mercenary to go from level 1 to level 30, so we'll have to go and refresh it a couple of times during that, if you want to level up through training grounds. Then we get to the main gameplay progress loop of Hearthstone Mercenaries, which is Campfire and Tasks. There are a few different types of tasks available. You will have story tasks until you complete the entire storyline, and completing the storyline gives you around 30 packs overall, so it's really worth doing. Then you will also have daily tasks, Toki is right here. Currently this daily task is always complete two bounties for a few random mercenary coins. Except during limited time events, when the limited time event tasks replace this daily task. 
Overall, the daily task is not too important, but it's quite easy to complete doing whatever you do anyway. And finally, depending on the upgrade level of your campfire, there are up to four slots for mercenary tasks. Each mercenary has its own task chain. Each task chain consists of 18 tasks for that mercenary, and those tasks will give you a good chunk of coins for that mercenary, around 1000 coins each. It will also give you a bunch of random coins, and tasks 16 to 18. The final three tasks for each mercenary are going to give you a mercenary's pack, so you're going to get hundreds of packs from these tasks. Coins from these tasks, packs from these tasks, that's the main way that you progress through mercenaries, that's the main way you get new mercenaries, that's the main way you unlock abilities and equipment. Every day at the daily reset time of your region, you will get a new task chain for each of the empty slots that you have. And these are really task chains. Once you complete the first task in a task chain, then you will automatically receive the second task for that mercenary. So once you have the right mercenaries here, you can progress all the way from task 1 to task 18. Note that you can also abandon tasks at any time, and you should abandon tasks whenever you're not planning to complete them. When you abandon a task, you lose all progress for that task, but not for that task chain, and that task can come again at the end of the daily resets. If you do not get a task for a mercenary that you like from the daily reset, you can abandon the tasks, make some free space, and then go try to find a mystery node. One of the options in mystery nodes is Mysterious Stranger, and Mysterious Stranger is going to give you a new task chain for one of the mercenaries in your party. You can only find Mysterious Strangers for bounties that are level appropriate for the highest level merc in your party. So for level 30 mercs, you would be heading to Winter Spring Normal in the early days. Snowclaw in Winter Spring Normal can be done with Cariel, Samur or Cyrella. You can go all the way to Mystery Coin, try to find the stranger, retire if you don't find it, try again until you get the task that you want. And in order to upgrade your party so that they can handle all of Winter Spring, it's quite likely that you will have to search for some tasks. Sometimes you might just get them in dailies, but sometimes you just can't find them from there. You can find guides for all of the more difficult tasks on this channel, and there's a couple of nice tricks that you want to know for completing your tasks. One of them is Cookie the Cook. Cookie the Cook is an excellent measure for completing tasks because Cookie has the ability to go fish. Summon a random fish for your opponent with the death rattle benefits you. And the fish is they just stand there, they don't attack or anything. So if you need some target practice, you can kill off the original opponents as long as you have at least one fish on the board when they all die. So the fish on the board keeps the battle going and you can use those fishes in order to complete some tasks. Another phenomenal mercenary for tasks is Prophet Velen, because Velen's Blessing, gain plus 3 holy damage, your next holy ability casts twice, it stacks. You cast Velen's Blessing a second time, it casts twice. You cast it a third time, it casts three times, and so on. And then you can use some holy damage ability to deal tons of damage, like 450 or 900. And another nice trick for many damage based tasks is Ellie Starseeker. Quest for the Golden Monkey eventually gives you a monkey that adds spell damage to all of your characters, so that's another way to get more spell damage in order to deal damage faster. None of these tricks are mandatory, but sometimes they can really help you complete tasks faster. Somewhere during Winter Spring, the power of your original free mercenaries is starting to wane a little bit. And I recently did a free-to-play run where I checked, okay, so what kind of comp do I want to build in order to progress through Winter Spring and also through some of the Blackrock Mountain. And this is actually the team that I used through all of Winter Spring and through some of the Blackrock Mountain as well. So Cariel Samuro Cyrella, remember I told you those are good, they still form the mainstay of this comp. They still form the party that usually climbs all the way to the boss. Some of the boss fights in Winter Spring and Blackrock Mountain are really good with a nature squad, so I also brought a budget nature team here, consisting of three rare mercenaries that you don't get for free at the start. I'm using Googie the Cook with Appetizers. Appetizers is just really strong. It's a start of the game effect that gives your friendly characters more health, so even when Googie is on the bench, it just makes your Cariel Samura Cyrella better. So you want to max that for your Cookie alongside Fish Feast and then start working on your Cookie's cooking. Then I have Brukan, and Brukan's fabulous ability is Lightning Bolt, dealing damage and gain plus 3 nature damage, so you can start stacking up your damage with this one. Brukan, I use Lightning Rod, you max Lightning Rod, you max Lightning Bolt, and you start working on Chain Lightning. And finally I also have Guff. Guff is really about Living Brambles and about Bramble Don't Totem. Just max these and that will be great. Because then Guff deals a lot of damage with Living Brambles and Nature combo, repeat this. Kuki has that 2 speed ability, that's Nature, so Kuki will proc the combo and then Guff is just dealing a lot of damage. And you don't need to have this party fully upgraded like I have it here, actually on my free to play account. At the time when I completed all of Winter Spring, I had done all of my tasks on Samuro, I had done all of my tasks on Cyrella, 
but I had done all of my tasks on Brukan, and I hadn't done anything on any of the others. So as you can see, it's not about getting all of these fully upgraded. I actually don't even have appetizers on my free-to-play account on Kuki yet, even though appetizers is Kuki's best ability, but it's just not strictly mandatory. As you work your way deeper into Blackrock Mountain, the budget team is slowly starting to become less and less strong, and ultimately that's all going to culminate in this bounty, Rend Blackhand in Blackrock Mountain. I don't know what Blizzard was thinking when they built Rend Blackhand, but normal Rend Blackhand is more difficult than most heroic bounties. So this one is actually a showstopper that you will need a specific team for. But fear not, that team does not have to be expensive. This is the best budget team I have for Rend. Cariel Samuro Zerella, again, once again, that budget team is just strong, it's still capable of climbing. But at the boss fight, you also need a little bit of help, because you really want to have local R. Local R with Frigid Winds equipment and Hailstorm. You want to max these two abilities, and you can max them once you go through local R's tasks, and then local R will be all set up for Rend. And as a final sweeper for rent fight, you will want Tavish, you want to max your explosive trap, and then you want rigged wiring, but the level doesn't matter. So with the addition of those mercs to your squad, you can get through rent as well. And you can find full guide video for rent on this channel. If you're now wondering if your life is always going to be Cariel Samora or Cyrella, it is not. There's actually another very strong budget comp. It doesn't consist of starter mercenaries, but only rare mercenaries that you can use to climb with. And this budget comp is dragons. It's Yulon with Pearl of Yulon, Nefarian with Chromatic Dragonflight, and Sinestra with Mana Brooch. So that's an alternative really cheap and even stronger comp than Cariel, Samuro and Cyrella. However, at this point Blizzard changed how you acquire equipment. So previously you got one piece of equipment when you reached level 30, and the other two come from tasks. But now, for the newer mercenaries, one piece of equipment comes from completing a specific heroic bounty with that mercenary in your party. And in order to make these budget dragons work, you want Pearl of Yulon, and in order to get Pearl of Yulon, you have to complete a heroic bounty with Yulon in your comp. So it is not until halfway through Alterac Valley that you actually can get budget dragons going. In order to get budget dragons going, you need to defeat heroic Rotimer with Yulon in your party, and you can do that with a reasonably familiar looking budget team, like Cariel, Samura and Cyrella, then Yulon being just carried here, Gromash, another starter mercenary, Halting Sass and Staggering Slam, and Sinestra, Yulon's upcoming party mate, using Mana Brooch, which does not have to be unlocked from a heroic bounty. Once you reach Alterac Valley, you can get your budget dragons comp running pretty easily after all. So far in this video, I have been presenting cheap comps, cheap alternatives to get through the early areas and even some of the later areas, but the game obviously is far more than just budget comps. So in this final section, I want to take a look at some of the top comps and some of the good comps that you can start to build towards as you gain more mercenaries. And the most easily accessible like mainstream comp is nature comp. Because you probably already use Guff, you probably already use Brukan, those are really strong rare mercenaries, and all you need to turn them into a nature comp is to add Malfurion. Malfurion is a legendary mercenary that the equipment really makes nature comp, life root staff. Passive, whenever you cast a nature ability, restore 6 health to your characters. So nature has a lot of sustain, nature is quite slow, but nature can get a lot done. Once you get Malfurion, you want to max your life root staff, you want to max your scenario surge, you get coins for those from tasks, and then you start working on entangling roots and arch druids call. And that's really going to make nature comp for you. Another reasonably accessible comp that has its uses in some of the boss fights, even though it's not generally used as farming comp, is Holy. Holy is slow, Holy is a lot of sustain, so similar to nature comp in that regard. In Holy comp, you use Anduin Ring with Harmonic Mallet and Holy Nova. These are really the key abilities, just those big AoE Holy Novas. Then you have Cornelius Roam in the middle, protecting your other mercenaries with Shield of Dawn. And Cornelius is a free mercenary, you start with Cornelius. And then you have Prophet Velen. Prophet Velen using Holy Blast with Tome of Inspiration, and then Velen's Blessing in conjunction with Anduin's Holy Nova to get even bigger AoE. Velen is a really useful mercenary, it's also for task completion, so you kind of want Velen anyway, Cornelius is free, so it's really about getting that Anduin on top. 
overall the best comp in the game is fire. A three-piece fire can handle pretty much everything in this game. You just need Belinda with lesser water elemental. That comes from Heroic Director, which is really, really hard. There's of course a guide for that on this channel, but yeah, that equipment is quite difficult to unlock. Sometimes people also use lesser fire elemental. It also works. It's a little more glass cannon-like. You are more likely to lose mercenaries, but you also blast even harder. Then you use Ragnaros with Blazing Rune. Ragnaros mostly uses Blazing Rune and die insects. And Baron Gedon with Mark of Convocation. And you just want Mark of Convocation and Inferno for Gedon. And then you're just blasting. Ragnaros and Gedon really form the core of this comp. Belinda can be replaced, even though Belinda is the strongest third option. But instead of Belinda, you could have Gigi with Blazing Band and using Blazing Song. Or you could have Yulon using different abilities than in Dragon Comp, because here you would want to use Jadefire Spear and Jade Pain Buffet, because it's a fire ability, so it allows Gedon to go on with its fire combo. Fire is really a premium endgame comp that you're aiming for, but not the only very strong comp. Another strong one is Frost, and Frost is using low card that we're already familiar with. It also uses Ward and Dawn Grass with Potion of Ice and just going with those flurries. And Jaina Broadmore with Ice Block Talisman using Ice Flows. Alinda, being a fire-frost hybrid mercenary, is also an excellent addition to the frost comp. And another recently popular farming comp is built around Yashirash. With Yashirash's defiled attack, Mark of Yashirash steals a ton of attack from your other mercenaries, so then you just want mercenaries that can summon more tokens, so that you have more targets to steal attack from. And for that purpose, Murky with March of the Murlocs is great. Murky can also use Slime Time to give Taunt to something, so you can always dictate where Yashirash goes first. And then Kasakus with Wild Wine so that those Murlocs become bigger, and Maxed build a Golem so that you can build really big Golems. More attack for Yashuras to steal. And in some cases this comp can also benefit from Nefarian, although in this case, like for Dragon Comp you want Nefarian with Chromatic Dragonflight and Dragonite Rush, you still want Nefarian with Dragonite Rush for this one, but you want Experimental Subjects as the equipment. There is a ton of Hearthstone Mercenaries content on this channel, you can find everything you need to know about the game here, and I hope this preview gives you enough ideas on how to get started and what to aim for as you begin your journey in Hearthstone Mercenaries. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.